Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Many of you probably know that a little over a year ago, Adobe added something to Photoshop called Neural Filters. Now at that time, I did a few videos on the new Neural Filters that were in Photoshop. Several, several of those filters though, were in beta and they didn't work very well. One of those was a filter called Colorize. Colorize allows you to take a black and white image and colorize it. Unfortunately, it didn't work very well. Well, in the latest version of Photoshop, they've improved it greatly. It's still in beta, but it works very well. And we're gonna demo it in this video. I also wanna talk about a new filter that's in there called Depth Blur. I think Depth Blur has a lot of possibilities and many photo, uh, photographers will take advantage of this filter in the future. Now let's start out with colorize. I have this older black and white image of Audrey Hepburn. I want to colorize it. I'm gonna go up to filter, neural filter, and then the neural filter dialog box opens up and right down here, it's still in beta, it's called colorize. We'll just turn it on and you'll see in a second or two, it colorizes it and it does a really nice job. Uh, it didn't work at all when it first came out and I think it's working real well now. At least it didn't work well for me, I should add, uh, but it does a nice job now. And you have several controls below it. Uh, first of all, you could click right in the image to add a focal point, uh, what should be in focus, and at that point, what the color should be. Um, in this case here, I don't think I need to do it. You could also adjust the color mix between cyan and red, blue and yellow, magenta and green. You also could adjust this slider, focus color, scene color. Now there's not a lot of information on what this slider actually does. On this specific image, it doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, of course, again, this filter is still in beta, so th that's the lack of documentation. But it seems to kind of adjust where the algorithm used to look at the image, decide what the subject is, in this case, Audrey Hepburn, that's in focus, and what's not the subject, that which is out of focus, and whether you want Photoshop to look more towards what is in focus to derive your palette of colors for the entire image or to look more at the scene to derive that palette of colors to colorize the image. In this case, as I mentioned, it doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, saturation, if it's not saturated enough, turn that on and move it to the right and you could add saturation to the image. If it's saturated too much, turn the slider on and move it to the left to desaturate. In this case, I think it was fine right where it was and I'll turn it off. Reduce color artifacts. If you see little like colorful dots or squares or just odd shapes, move this to the right to help reduce them. Move it to the left if you don't have them. In this case here, it doesn't seem to do anything. It doesn't seem that this image has any color artifacts. Noise reduction, you can see on her cheeks and on her nose, there's some noise. You could turn this on and it's not really advanced noise reduction. It's really just a blur. So you can move it to the right and you can see how it's blurring out her skin. But for an old photo, that's probably fine. Now you can colorize color images. So if you have a faded color image, you could load it in here and you could enhance the colors with this filter. And if for any reason, when it does that, it's shifting the colors, what you could do is click this checkbox and it will retain the original image colors. It just will enhance the original colors. You could add a profile to it. This is kind of like a LUT. It's a good starting point if you want to shift the colors or the contrast of the image before you start colorizing it. For example, if I click here, I could make it a retro purple yellow and you'll see what it does. Now, if it's too intense or not intense enough for you, turn on the slider below it and then you can move it to the right to make it more intense or left to make it less intense. In this case, for this image, I don't think I want to use a profile at all. Now, once you're done adjusting your sliders, you're satisfied with the result. You have um, options to put it to either a current layer, duplicate layer, duplicate layer that is masked, a new layer, or a smart filter. I usually choose a smart filter when I use these neural filters because I, it will allow me to go back in and readjust anything. For example, on this image, if you look at noise reduction, I have it set at 44. All right, let's just click OK. So it'll apply the colorization to this image. And you can see over here on the right hand side, I have my layer with a neural filter. Because I used a smart 
layer, I could double click on neural filters, come back in and it will remember my settings, noise reduction at 44. I go, well, I added a little bit too much so I could tone that down or bring it down. So I could readjust whatever I adjust, whatever I adjusted when I use a smart filter. So that's color rosation or colorize. Um, I think it, they've improved it greatly. It's still not perfect, but it's working much, much better. Now, the other one I wanted to talk about was depth blur. I have this image here. You can see it's pretty much in focus from right in front of the camera all the way to the background. So I want to add some depth blur to it. So I'm going to go up to filter, neural filters, and depth blur is like colorize, still in beta. So we're going to turn it on. Now, by default, what it will do is it's going to do the opposite of what I want for this image. You could see it has this kind of area right in here in focus, and you can see it's rather abrupt. Let's just leave it here right now so I could show you some of the adjustments. Uh, first of all, the blur strength, right? I could dial down the blur strength by moving it to the left. It has to access the cloud. All these neural filters access the cloud for, to get their adjustment. And you can see this blue spinning circle up here. So that's telling you it's basically a, accessing the cloud. And this specific neural filter is pretty slow. So it does take a while. But let's just leave it really strong so I could then show you the rest. The focal range. If I move this to the left, you'll see that it will, once it's done accessing the cloud, it kind of softens those hard edges. If I move it to the right, you'll see that it will have real hard blurred edges. You could see like blur, blur, and then it's abruptly in focus and down here as well. So you could adjust the focal range to um, try to soften those edges up a little bit. Focal distance, uh, where, what do you want in focus? If I move it to the right, you'll see that the area that's in focus will shift out. So it's shifting out towards where the boat is, more where I want it. Of course, if you move to the left, it's going to be more right in front of the camera and everything behind it will be in, um, out of focus. Now I'll talk about the others in a minute. What you probably want to do though is you want to click somewhere that you want in focus and then this filter will work around that. What I mean by that, if you look at this little um, like postage stamp image of our scene, um, just click. It has a cross here and it's telling you to click to edit the focal point. I want the name of the ship to be in focus. So I'm going to click right there because that is actually where I focused when I took this image. So when I click there, you could see there's our focal point. We have this blur now. Now I could adjust these sliders to better fit my vision for what I want blurred. You know, so you have this kind of blur then it goes out and it's pretty much in focus all the way out. You could have the focus range. You could change that. What I generally do when I don't ex know exactly what a slider will do is I'll just move it to an extreme to kind of get an idea of what it does and then move it, you know, start refining it to get it where I want it. Now, for this case, with the focal point being right on the name of the ship, focal range doesn't seem to be doing a lot. Focal distance will be grayed out when you clicked on the image to tell it what is in focus, so you won't be able to adjust that. Now, you could add some atmospheric haze uh, to the image, and it will be, you know, in this case, in the distance, so it added some haze. I think the haze kind of looks all right. Uh, you could add warmth or coolness. It says warmth, but if you click it and turn it on and you move it to left, it's going to add like a cool look, you know, to, so it's going to be more towards the blues, as you can see. If I move it to the right, it'd be more towards yellows, oranges, as it will warm it up. And you can see there. Now, in this case here, I don't think I want to use that at all. Take that off. Now, if you need to adjust the brightness, either up or down, now it's taken a long time to render. You can see this spinning blue circle up here. Let it do its thing. So make it brighter, move it to the right, make it a little less bright or darker, move it to the left, still that spinning blue circle. In this case here, excuse me, I'm going to leave it right off, let it render, and then I'll show you saturation is exactly what it means. If I click that and turn that on, I could increase saturation, move it to the right, if it ever works and move it to left to decrease saturation. And there, 
I'm going to have that off, of course, let it render. And then I'll put a depth map only for some Photoshop processes. You sometimes want to acquire a depth map, depth map, a depth map of the image. And if I turn this on, you'll see I'll get this kind of like, you know, black and white image basically. And that's the depth map. And in this case here, I don't need that. So I'm going to turn that off. And I like this. Now, similar to before, I want to output it to a smart filter and click OK. And then what it will do is it will return to Photoshop with my kind of blurred foreground. And if I turn off the neural filter, there's before and there's after. And taking a second to render. And let's just say I don't, because it's a smart filter and it's a smart object that it's on, if I double click on the words neural filters, I could come back in and readjust something. Let's say I don't like the haze. So I could turn that off. Let it render. And then once it does, click OK. And then it will come back and it will remove the haze now. So there is before the neural filter, after the neural filter. And it's taking a second to render and it's really screwing up my video. So there's before. And there eventually will be after. So that's it. That's a couple neural filters that are in Photoshop, still in beta, but I think they're improving them uh, greatly, especially that colorized one. Uh, you may remember, if you look at that colorized one, I'm, I'm not too happy on this image on the background. So hopefully they improve that uh, very soon uh, so that it does a better job with the background on, on stuff like this. But I think it did a pretty good job overall. Um, on Audrey Hepburn herself. And this is kind of an interesting filter that I think uh, many people that have a kit lens and they can't get those really wide apertures, you know, f1.4 or something like that, they'd be able to uh, do something um, in Photoshop to get that look that they um, can't, go, can't get with the lens they have. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.